Matthew chapter number 27. We'll begin reading in verse number 45. The Bible says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good day you blessed us with. Thank you for the good jail services you allowed us to have this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing, the choir singing, the congregational singing, and the special singing. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, we thank you for the good week of revival you blessed us with. And Lord, I pray that revival fires would just begin to start kindling in our hearts and it would transform us into your likeness that all the world would take note that we've been with Jesus. Now, Lord, I realize in being in church every night this week and having to deal with the pressures of life and working and working and, and functioning in life and yesterday getting caught up for the week and uh, everything, physically, folks are tired. And, Lord, mentally, folks may be even spent. But I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I certainly pray you'd refresh and uh, uh, rejuvenate your people. And God, I certainly pray that the Word of God would find a tremendous lodging place in our hearts and our lives, that, Lord, uh, we would uh, certainly begin to look more like you. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray if there's anybody that has yet been revived this week, that today would be the day of their revival. I pray in a crowd this size, if there's somebody that's never been saved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray if there's somebody struggling, you would strengthen them. Somebody needs help, you'd help them. Lord, I just pray your perfect will would be done. Now, Father, you know my limitations today with my throat. I pray you'd touch us and help us. Lord, we want to give you our best. Lord, we certainly pray you'd use this unworthy vessel and you would pour out a message that would change all time and eternity for someone here today. Bless as only you can. Help us, Father, and we'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads again and thank you for your good grace. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we find by the time we get to Matthew 27, 45 that the Lord Jesus has been retained. He was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was arrested uh, because he had the audacity of eating with publicans and sinners. He was known as a friend of sinners. Can I say some 2,000 years later, he's still known as the friend of publicans and sinners. They came and they arrested him there, and after they retained him, uh, can I say they, they rejected him. Pilate found no fault in the Lord Jesus, wanted to release him before Passover, uh, and the chief priest and the elders of Israel stirred up the people, and they cried for Barabbas rather than Jesus. The Bible said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He was rejected of the Jews. Uh, many reject him today, uh, but I'm sure uh, uh, thankful there are still some who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and receive him as Lord and Savior. He was retained, he was rejected, uh, and then he was reprehended. He was scourged. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails, where they strung him up to a whipping post. Uh, and with uh, that cat of nine tails, they began to whip him and rip the flesh from his body. Uh, 
He did not look like the pictures you see painted of him hanging on a cross uh, with a little blood coming from his hands and his feet and his side. Uh, uh, friend Isaiah said uh, his visage was marred much more than any man. Uh, he was beaten beyond recognition. Uh, he was tortured. Uh, they planted his head with a crown of thorns. Uh, they mocked him. They spit upon him. They plucked out his beard. Uh, they tortured him. Uh, and led him down the Via Della Rosa, him bearing his own cross, to where they nailed him to the cross and suspended him between heaven and earth. Notice, if you will, while this is transpiring, the decree in verse number 46. The Bible says, In about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? While he has been stripped and beaten and spit upon and mocked and cursed, surely the one that would not turn against him would be his father. But here we find he cries with a loud voice and decrees that even his father has turned away from him. We notice the disconcerted. In verses 47 through 49, they began to cry out. Oh, he calleth for Elias. Oh, one even was going to take some vinegar and put to his mouth. And they said, no, hold your peace. Let's see if Elias comes to save him. He's talking about Elijah. They were disconcerted about what was going on. They were more concerned about something they thought would be supernatural not understanding the most supernatural thing that ever happened was happening right before them note if you, if you will his demise in verse number 50 Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost we find another count says he cries it is finished and he gave up the ghost can I say they did not kill Jesus? They did not murder Jesus? They did not slay Jesus? Jesus gave his life for you and I. He had said earlier, no man taketh his life for him. He lay it down freely. And he gave his life for the sheep. Uh, and we know three days later he takes it up again. Why? Because he is the resurrection uh, and the life. Uh, but we do see that Jesus did die on Calvary. Notice, if you will, verse 45. The Bible says, From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. We see darkness. Now, if you study the Bible, you'll know the sixth hour is noontime. The Jews back in those days started their day not at midnight, but at sunrise. So from the sixth, uh, sixth hour to the ninth hour, from noon till three o'clock in the afternoon, there was total darkness on the earth. With the event that befell our world this past week, this is what I want to preach on for the next few minutes. I want to preach on the total eclipse of the sun. The total eclipse of the sun. You see, there was darkness... For those three hours why Jesus hung on the cross suspended between heaven and earth. Can I say that God darkened the S-U-N uh, over the S-O-N uh, for some specific reasons. Can I say that God darkened the S-U-N so that mm, the S-O-N uh, uh, no one could gaze upon the cost of sin. Can I say that Jesus died on the cross because he came into this world as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world uh, and he came to pay the sin debt of all mankind. Uh, he was the cost uh, for our sin. Uh, can I say uh, for every filthy, vile sin that man would ever commit, uh, Jesus died for on the cross of Calvary. Uh, 
In order to atone for the sin, he had to die for the sin. Uh, and my dear friends, there are sins uh, that will disgust you and I, uh, but Jesus Christ still died for those sins. Uh, Jesus is interested in sinners. Uh, he loves sinners. Uh, hates sin but loves sinners uh, and he died for the sin of mankind uh, and when God laid on him the iniquity of us all uh, and God imputed unto Jesus Christ uh, the sin of all mankind uh, and he became our sacrifice, uh, our substitute. Uh, my dear friends, it was so hideous uh, that God turned out the sun uh, so no one could gaze upon that hideous sight. Uh, God did not want man to gaze upon the cost of our sin. Just think about it, Brother Ron. He who was holy became the most vile. God didn't want anybody to look upon that. The pureness and gloriousness and holiness of Christ was turned into the most vile and despicable because of sinful man. And I say God darkened the sun over the sun so that one couldn't grasp the condemning separation. When Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You've got to understand the Godhead had always been one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost agree as one. They've always been uh, three different separate personalities, but the same person. Say, explain that. I can't. My little feeble mind can't, uh, can't grasp it. Uh, but there is the trinity of the Godhead. Uh, they'd always been one. Uh, but when the Lord laid on Jesus Christ the sin of mankind, uh, uh, God the Father had to turn his back on his son because uh, God cannot accept sin. Uh, matter of fact, you go and study the Genesis account, you'll find that light was here before the sun or the moon because light comes from God and God turned his back on his son and it turned the lights out friend and when Jesus is there hanging becoming our sin and the agony of our sin uh, and uh, 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 the, the, the depravity of our sin is befalling him uh, and for the first time uh, uh, his holiness is stripped from him uh, and my dear friends uh, in that weakest moment when he needed the father the most God turned his back on him. No wonder we hold dear, Brother Ray, the promise that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus Christ knows what it is to be forsaken, but you and I as believers never will because he'll never walk out on us. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, he's experienced that and he said we never will. God did not want man to grasp that condemning separation. Turn the lights out. And then can I say, God darkened the sun over the sun so the devil couldn't gloat in cheerful satisfaction. You see, the devil still thought he killed the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist in that prophetical psalm in Psalm 22 said, The bulls of Bashan, they encompass me. I believe that hell dispatched every imp from hell to Calvary that day, uh, tried to kill him on the cross. Uh, they were gaping upon him. Uh, they were torturing him. They were taunting him. Uh, and all the while, God turned out the lights uh, so Satan couldn't gloat uh, in what the darling Son of God was doing. Uh, make no mistakes. Uh, it was not his, the sin of mankind that held him there. Uh, it was not the nails in his hands and his feet that held him there. Uh, it was the love of God for a fallen man uh, that held him there. Uh, and he was not going to let Satan gloat in victory uh, uh, in something that Satan had nothing to do with. Uh, it was all a work of God because uh, God would cared about you and he cared about me uh, and God turned out the lights uh, so Satan could not gloat in cheerful satisfaction. 
If Satan could have killed him, he would have not gave up the ghost. If Satan could have killed him, the veil of the temple wouldn't have rent from top to bottom. It would have rent from bottom to top. If Satan could have killed him, he'd have killed him in the garden before he got to the cross. Mm -mm. But I'm glad, hallelujah, God hung Jesus out there on Calvary for your sin and my sin. But can I say, God darkened the sun over the sun. Oh, but wait. One day, the S-O-N will eclipse all the darkness. Oh, yeah, there's a day coming when he'll eclipse all darkness and there'll be no more darkness. The Bible says in Revelation 21 and verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Verse 25 of Revelation 21 said, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. There's coming one eternal day, friend. There'll never be a thousand years in heaven because there's only one day. There is no more night over there. The sun never sets over there because the sun, S-O-N, is sitting on the throne and he is the light of that celestial city where we're going to spend eternity and he will eclipse all darkness. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, can I say in that day, the Savior will be elevated. The Bible says uh, in Revelation 5 and verse number 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. Uh, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred uh, and tongue and people and nation uh, and has made us unto our God kings and priests uh, and we shall reign on the earth uh, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders uh, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands uh, saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb uh, that was slain uh, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing uh, and every creature which is in heaven uh, and on the earth uh, and under the earth uh, and such as in the sea uh, and all that are in them uh, heard I say in blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him uh, that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Uh, there's coming a day the rejected one will be the reigning one and he will be elevated to where every tongue will confess and every knee will bow before him and proclaim him Lord of lords and King of kings. Uh, the Savior be elevated. I've got good news. There's coming today. Sin will be eradicated. Amen. Revelation 22, 3 says there'll be no more curse. Listen. There's coming today we won't have to deal with sin. Uh, can I say... Sin has broke up many homes. Sin has destroyed many lives. Sin has dragged off many people off into hell. There's coming a day there'll be no more sin. Jesus, uh, he conquered sin when he died on Calvary. Uh, but one of these days going to eradicate it, do away with it. Wouldn't it be wonderful to go to a land where there'll be no more sin, uh, where you don't have to worry about anybody ever doing anything wrong ever again. Won't that be a blessing? Can I say that coming today, the Savior will be elevated. Sin will be eradicated. The saints will be emancipated. Uh, we live in these bodies of death. And your soul can be saved, but your flesh is still rotten. Your flesh is still wicked. One of these days we'll be emancipated from these old bodies of flesh and we'll be given a body like in the Son of God. Uh, one of these days uh, we'll take our rightful place as the bride of Christ. Uh, 
What a blessing. Revelation 19, verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, uh, and the voice of many waters, uh, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Uh, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, uh, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, uh, and his wife hath made herself ready. Uh, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, uh, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Uh, and he saith unto me, Bless, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, and he saith unto me, These are the true saints of God. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the bride of Christ. Can I say I was born into the family? I got adopted into the family, and one of these days I'll be married into the family of God. What a blessing to be a part of the bride of Christ. Oh, what a thrill that we'll be emancipated. Can I say that we are in this world, but we are not of this world? We are not of the rudiments and the elements of this world, but can I say this? One of these days we'll truly be emancipated from this world. One of these days, we'll truly understand and embrace our royal priesthood and being part of that citizenship of that heavenly land. One of these days, we'll be emancipated, huh? John got a glimpse of it and said, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. He said, You can't even believe it. And even in your heart what God has got, got over there on the other side. What a day that's going to be, huh? Hallelujah. But then let me say this. I'm talking about one day the sun's going to, eclipse all darkness one of these days the Savior is going to be elevated sin is going to be eradicated the saints will be emancipated but Satan will be eliminated can I go on record saying I hate the devil I hate what he does to people he lies he's the father of it he's very subtle he deceives people people thinking they're having a good time don't even realize that he's got them in their clutches. If the Lord doesn't intervene in some miraculous way, they're going to be dragged off into hell by him. I hate the devil. I hate all the pain, all the sin that he's caused. Every lie that's ever been told, every murder that's ever been committed, every rape that's ever been committed, every human tra trafficking, every every. A wicked thing done to a child every every sorry no good sin that has ever been done uh, every home broken up I mean every problem in this world it was caused by Satan but he's not getting away with it friend Revelation 20 and 10 says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever the devil's going to get his due, hallelujah. He's going to pay for every sin he ever committed and ever caused. You think, Brother Adrian, the Lord let us kick him on his way out when he binds him up and gets ready, throws him in the lake of fire, huh? You do realize what's going to happen. Satan's going to bow down and, and worship the Lord. And then the Lord's going to have him bound and thrown into the lake of fire. Maybe they're dragging that old sorry serpent out. We get to kick him. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Huh? Get to take a jab at him, huh? That's the least the Lord could let us do for all he's done to us, huh? The devil's going to get his due. I said all that to say this. One of the darkest days in human history is when the Son of God died for our sin. It was so dark, God shut the lights out, turned the sun off for three hours. You say, well, that was just an eclipse. That's not that big of a deal. No, 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 no. That happened right before the Passover. Passover always happens when there's a full moon. There's no eclipse when there's a full moon. It wasn't a natural event. It was a supernatural event. It was God-induced. Hmm? It was one of the darkest days of human history. But neighbor very soon is going to be one of the brightest days for the redeemed when the Lord's going to take his church home. The only thing that really matters is are you ready to meet the Lord? Have you ever trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? He went through the dark days so you could realize the glorious days. He came to die for your sin and to save you and change your life. Say, what's it take to be saved, preacher? Well, you've got to realize you need to be saved. 
You can't get saved till you get lost. When you realize he died for your sin because you cannot earn the, fa the favor of God outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only he could appease the wrath of God. And that's what he did on Calvary. And realize Jesus will save you from your sin. Say, so, preacher, how do you get saved? It's very simple. Once you realize you need to get saved, the Bible says, call on the name of the Lord. All the, Whosoever believeth on the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you got to do is come put your faith in the Lord. He'll save you. You got to believe that he died for your sins and was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. If you believe that in your heart and are willing to ask the Lord to save you, he'll save you. So how you know? That's what he did for me 50 years ago. And he'll save you, friend, because he loves you. That's why he died for you. So I didn't ask him to die for him for me because we didn't have sense enough to ask him to die for us. We're too busy trying to find fig leaves to cover our, un, uh, our nakedness and our sinfulness. But it took something greater than that. It took a work of God. It took a work of God to create man, and it took a work of God to allow man to be regenerated. And the only way we can be regenerated is by the blood that was shed on Calvary. And can I say this? Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to make a new creature out of you. And he will if you allow him. But for you and I that are saved, we get to looking around. Things are getting darker and darker and darker. That's okay. One day the light's going to break through. Because he is the light. And one of these days... He's going to take us home. So just hang in there, neighbor. It'll be all right. One of these days, he's calling us home. And our darkness will be done away with forevermore. Let me ask you a question. Are you in darkness today? You don't have to be. Why don't you step into the light? Let Jesus change your life. If you're saved, are you living like you're saved? Or are you still walking around in darkness? Why don't you step out of that darkness and into the light? Walk in the light as he's in the light. Huh? Why don't you let the Lord help you today? So, preacher, I didn't get anything out of revival. Get something out of it today. Why don't you come, get some help. Let the Lord change you. Well, I'm here to tell you, all the world was in an upheaval Monday because of an eclipse. They started selling them goofy glasses six months ago. April 8th, eclipse. Uh -uh. You know why? Because natural man really cannot have any answers for the phenomena of God. So it's an event. Can I say the greatest event is when natural man comes to trust in a living God and he changes their life. So today, if you don't know him, we'd love to introduce you to him. There's nothing like the Lord Jesus. Oh, what a relationship you can have with Almighty God who gave his only begotten son for your sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came to die so that you and I could live and live for all of eternity. Do you know him today? You can. He wants you to know him and he'll change your life. Say, preacher, I know him. What a blessing. Are you living for him? Because there's a whole world out here that doesn't know him. And they need to see what Jesus Christ, what a difference he can make in somebody that's put their faith in him. How about it today? Do you know him? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, you come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. Why don't you come? Put your faith in the Lord. We invite you to come. The Spirit of the Lord invites you to come. Church invites you to come. Why don't you come? Maybe you just need to come and thank him for dying for you. They sang that song, thank you for saving me. Maybe you need to just come and thank him for saving you. Maybe you just need to come tell him you love him. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for giving your life for such a worm as I. Thank you for being so good to us. Now, Lord, I pray if there's any amongst us, and Lord, I don't know anybody's heart, but if there's anybody amongst us today who doesn't know the Lord, I pray today would be the day they'd give their heart and life to you. Lord, if there's folks here that are saved but living beneath their privilege of a, as a Christian, I pray they'd come get things made right with you. Maybe somebody just needs to come tell you they love you or come tell you thank you. 
Lord, whatever the need, blessing this invitation. And Father, we'll not fail to praise you and thank you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.